today we're kind of assuming that we're working in clean data and we're gonna go ahead and make tables and pivot tables from there. Um, and the reason, well I can like personalize this so much to you. Yeah. Have you worked so with <laughs> have you worked with tables in Excel before? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you probably but have you done pivot tables? That's what I want to learn. Okay. I mean I know the simple pivot tables, like you could in here I would say like you throw the order ID and then you pull the how many like of them of you from you west or from south. Yeah. That's what you might do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean the simplest thing that I know but I maybe you have something in advanced. Yeah, I'll do some stuff beyond basics. But um, so basically you already know that well I'll go over really fast and since you already know tables. I was going to go over it in more detail if it was uh, more beginners, but uh, I was going to talk about how tables have a lot of advantages. If you were to stay in just the spreadsheet format, you can't do as much as if you change everything into table format. So I was going to have everyone, you have PC, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I was going to have everyone just copy this spreadsheet into a whole other spreadsheet. And you can, if you hold down control and you click on the data uh, spreadsheet and then you move it over, so there's like a little icon that has a plus sign, and then you release, it will copy the whole data spreadsheet over. <laughs> um, yeah, also I was going to throw in like tips here and there for this um, geek out because this is the first geek out where I had a very large data set, like beyond 100 rows. Whereas before I had like everything you could see in one in one screen, um, so I was going to use a lot more shortcuts to show you how to navigate around. Uh, okay, so then if you click anywhere in the table and hit Control T, it will come up with the like table create table dialog box, and then our table does have headers, so you can click OK. So then all of this is now in table format. And so I was going to go over really quickly, um, I made a notes tab for everyone to look at what I was going to go over with them, but basically the, all the reasons you would want to use a table instead of a spreadsheet, because people don't really know why they would use a table versus a spreadsheet. Uh, so I was going to say it's very quick formatting, because you probably already know that um, in your design tab, you can change your table style so easily with whatever format it already has available for you. So you can pick whatever style you like. Um, also, the header always stays no matter how far down you scroll because it ends up appearing up here. Whereas in the spreadsheet, you have to freeze the row for it to stay. Uh, otherwise, it, you'll lose it. And then the filters are automatically available in every header, in every column rather than you having to go in the spreadsheet and going to this sort and filter uh, button. And then also, the table will always um, auto-fit and expand and stay consistently formatted as you add uh, rows and columns. So if, okay, so for example, here's a shortcut. If you click anywhere in the table and you want to get down to the bottom of the table as quickly as possible, you can hit um, control down, control down here. Uh, so then you can get to the bottom of the table. And then if you tab all, or you control right arrow all the way to the end of the table, and you hit tab, it should create a new row in the table for you. And you can enter whatever, whatever data you want. And it will be a part of the table, and you can tell because like now there's a there's a kind of a blue line under. So our new row is included in the table. So what, why why did you just make it the blue one instead of the color? Uh, because we added a row. Yeah, I typed in like data to add a new row, um, but we don't need it. But basically, I just wanted to tell people like if you hit tab and you enter new data. It will stay consistently mm -hmm. formatted, and um, the table will expand to include the new data. But if you want to type something below and make it like outside the table, then you know. I mean, for the next three three hundred seventy three line, and just add it. So if you want to make it a part of the table, oh, like in here? No, no, no. Three seventy three. 
Have like a little buff, okay? And then you type something and you want to be to the part of this table. The oh. game buff table. Yeah, yeah. Or you expand the table to the Yeah, the table will keep expanding. Oh, oh, wow, it's white and blue. White, okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> it's the way it doesn't have anything out of the table. Ah, okay. uh, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, but we can do So it is automatically considers all, everything beneath as a continuation of the Yeah. Stuff. Yeah, um, and that will become helpful whenever you create an insert a chart based off this, this uh, and I have it here too. Um, when you insert chart, it will always be linked to the table as a like permanent data source. Because if you were to create a chart from this plain spreadsheet, you would have to keep on telling the chart, okay, now I want you to in, uh, include all the data from rows 4 to 300. And now, to, and you have to redo it and do, okay, rows four to 400 now. But if you connect it to a table, you don't have to tell the chart constantly like what the data source is coming from. It will know to stay connected to the table even as it expands. Okay, um, okay and then what else? Oh, in tables, ranges are named. Okay, so that means in here, the, the names or everything is just based off of the column letter and the row number. But in tables, it reads all the data as um, as what you name it, and it's automatically named. So let's say, for example, let's say, for example, we want it to total all of the revenue. So you would do equals sum, and then you would do, actually let me do this. So, actually there's an even easier way to do it. So if you were in your table, and let me find it. Okay, if you're in your table and you go to the design tab, and you check the box for a total row, it will automatically add a row to the bottom of your table and it will total, so in this case it totaled our final column, which is shipping fee. Uh, but you know how you can autofill totals? So you go in and click on this little blue, I mean green square on the bottom right hand corner and drag it over to the left. And now you have the totals for the revenue column as well. And okay, now when you click on this cell, so you can read whatever the formula is, you can see that it reads as subtotal 109, which is just a code to say that uh, this is a subtotal for numbers, um, and revenue. And you can see how it actually knows it's subtotaling revenue. Whereas if we were in a regular spreadsheet, it would say subtotal, uh, what, is, what column is this? Like y. whatever, Z or Y, I think. Y4 to Y372. But instead of that, like crazy r random letters and numbers, it actually tells you the name. So that's another advantage of tables. Everything is named and it's more intuitive. Um, what else? Okay, so I just told you totals is very easy to add because you just do that checkbox. Mm -hmm. And also if you click on the arrow, you can easily change it from instead of sum, you can change it to count or you can change it to min or max. So it's super easy. You don't even have to type in formulas. It's all available for you to just do. And that's because like the table functions in Excel is like Excel knows what is basically useful for people, like business people. So it already has all of this available, whereas if you're just using the spreadsheet format, it doesn't have all of this automatically there for you. Okay, so that's totals. And oh, another advantage of that is, um, so let's change it back to sum. Okay, when it's back to sum and you filter Let's say we filtered this column revenue to like deselect all and just select like a random number, but not all of them. And click OK and it only selects those. Your totals changes automatically. Because your totals is based off of what is visible, what data is visible. 
So now you can go back and clear the filter. Uh, okay, so any other advantages? Oh, so if you were to, because the table stays consistent no matter what you do within it. So if you were to add a formula within, um, within the table, all of the rows following it would automatically fill with the same formula. Uh, you don't have to like drag drag it down. And I told you about charts. Okay, and then the other thing I wanted to show was slicers. So you click anywhere in the table and you go to insert and then you click slicer. Yeah, it should be in insert. Oh, you did get the insert I get with the slice of shapes, like in the middle on the right. Oh. No slicer? Did you just lost my uh, I just click anywhere in the table yeah. and then insert slicer. Slicer. Oh. <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay. So slicers let you um, basically like slice and dice the data however you want. So you can click on anything you're interested in and select it. You can click. You can select multiple as well uh, and click OK. Well, this one's not useful because there's only QS. But uh, okay. So for our state slicer, you now have this little thing that you can quickly change your table vis visual very easily. And it looks like a little a little button, you know, like a dashboard that follows you around. Yeah, this is what that goes to. Yeah. Yeah, and this will come in handy for the next geek out when we make dashboards because the slicers okay, I'll give you a, a preview of what the dashboard looks like. Mm -hmm. I didn't make it actually. It's uh I gave you the source tab for for where I got this from because I here. If you go to your source tab, you can see where I got it from and download. Okay, because Tim, you don't have all of the tabs that I have up here because this is my yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so I wanted to hide it from you, but um, this is essentially what we're going to try to make and see how he has slicers here and his um, dashboard changes depending on what's selected. So that's that's super nice. But anyway, so. Today we're just going to stay mostly with tables and pivot tables. So slicers still look very professional um, if you want to like impress people. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's slicers and all right. Uh, let's see. Okay, so after we played with slicers. Um, I wanted to show people if you were to insert a chart from this table, uh, it would actually look really terrible. So I'll show you. Because <clears throat> if you think about it, insert chart, let's just do a scatter plot, for example. I mean, a line chart, for example. It would look crazy. Let's do a scatter plot. It wouldn't really make sense because you have um, all of these entries for all these products that were bought by different companies, sold by different salespeople over a lot of time. Um, so it's just like too much data to put in a chart. Um, so that's where I was going to introduce pivot tables, and that's why pivot tables is so much more helpful to visualize data. Because um, you'll see, actually, if you go to insert recommended charts, it will actually recommend for you a pivot table. So if you click anywhere, okay, so what I do is click anywhere in the table. Oh, yeah, yeah, I have the sum of pivot tables here. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, um, and basically you see that it already recommended for you to do a pivot table, and it created oh, for you a pivot yes. chart. And the pivot chart has even um, its slicer already there for you by salesperson. So you can like select just a few people and look at only them. 
Yeah, so Excel is pretty smart at recommending to you pivot tables, but we'll, like, for example, what if uh, this hadn't popped up in recommended charts? How would you do this by yourself? So we'll do, uh, we'll go through the steps from starting from pivot table to pivot chart. Okay, I'm actually going to delete this sheet because I don't want it. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to click anywhere in the table. I'm going to insert pivot table. So on the far left. And it's asking me if the whole table one is what I want, and I do want it on a new worksheet. So I click OK. So now we have um, all our fields that we want to work from and the four different areas of a pivot table. And I'll just go over really fast the areas. So um, the filter is what will pop up. Maybe I should just draw it on the board. Okay. Okay, so you have the pivot areas and it's filter, column, row, and values. And then whenever you go to make a pivot table, um, the filters will always pop up over the pivot table that you create. So this will be your filter. And so it has a drop down and you can, or a little button. And then you can filter by, let's say in this case, we'll do year. So the data in here will constantly change by like 2017, 2018. And then let's say that here we want region. And then north, east, south, west. Um, and then so these are your rows. So what you would put in rows is region, and what you would put in filter is year. And then for your columns, let's say you want quarters, so quarter one, two, three, four, and then all of this would be like your revenue, so all different uh, number amounts, I mean dollar amounts. So that would make quarter your, your field for columns, and then values would just be the sum of revenue. Yeah, so that's how everything is organized. So the basics make a lot of sense, um, but then it's a, there's like more advanced things that you can do beyond just the basics. Okay, so beyond the basics, uh, so for example, let's just play with what we want to put in our pivot table. Okay, so what do you think we want to put? The state and see one we sold each state. Okay, so revenue would probably uh, obviously be our our values, and then he said quantity in each state. So let's just do state uh -huh. and then quantity. But we can either do a quantity under state, or let's see what it'll look like by columns. But it doesn't, that's What's not what are those numbers, like 10 or is a month? Uh, no, it's like the quantity of every product that we've sold in the state. But this is kind of a, like a disorganized way to do it. It actually made more sense to do it like this. Or we could do it by product. What if we make a state quantity revenue? State quantity revenue. Where will we move? Oh, I mean, move quantity, the sum of quantity, sum of revenue to the values. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that would make more sense. Yeah. Uh, also, category, like the category of the products. You could do it by state um, and see which state is buying what kinds of products. Okay, so that's like the more basic kind of stuff. Oh, and you can filter it by year. Where is year? Or order date, I guess. No. Is there a way I can put all those blanks uh, with zeros? Like, would it just come in two places? Yes, there is. There is. Like, 
Oh, so when you go to um, pivot table options, so go to options, and then there's oh. this checkbox show oh. empty oh. cells. Oh. You can put in whatever you want. So like NA, for example. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so let's see. So I was going to show some things that were beyond just the basics. Um, so actually, we can look at the examples that were created in the dashboard, like what they use for their pivot tables. So this person used filter by region, um, all the sales people and how much each person was making, and then created a chart of it, which that makes a lot of sense. We also did top five customers, which companies were buying the most. Um, also did sales by region, so the north was um, buying the most. Oops. And then sales trends over time. And how many products were being bought and uh, count of revenue. And then sales by product. I think I like this one the most. So uh, what was making the most money was people were buying beverages and it was giving them $110,000. Okay, so some of the things that I wanted to show that were beyond just the basics. Uh, if you want to create this pivot table, I think we'll work from here. So put salesperson for your filter. Category for your row. Sum of or revenue for your values. Okay, and then here's one of the things I wanted to show that's beyond just the basics. If you drag revenue again into values, now it gives you two different ways that revenue is being read. So you can actually do right click on count of revenue and then change show values as. Change it to percent of grand total. Right. Yeah. And now you can see, even though revenue is the same thing two times in the values box, you are reading it two different ways. And they're both helpful. And um, yeah. And then. Okay, so there's another trick that you can do. Let's say we wanted to group some of these products into different categories. And for example, let's say we want fruits, nuts, and grains to be in the same group because we think they are similar. So highlight those two. Right click, click group. And then now you have a group that is dry, uh, dry fruit and nuts and grains. And you can do that for all of them. So maybe you want to group also, you can click one and then hold down. So jams and preserves and you want, and then hit control and then click oil. And you can group those as well. So you can go through, through and group all these products into different categories. How do you pull the oil uh, so I clicked on jams and preserves, okay. I hold down control, and then I clicked oil, and then group those. those. Oh. Yeah, and then release everything. They work? No. Wait, let me do it. Let me control so you can do it with you. Okay, so you have jams and preserves, right? The yeah. second one. Yeah. And then con hit, uh, hold down control, <laughs> and click the second oil. Yeah, like the and then release. Wait, let's see. Okay. Yeah. 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 So now they're selected. And then you right click on one of the selected ones. Right click on jam. No, no, no. The highlighted one. Yes. Right click on. No, I think I've got the highlighted one. Okay, right click on this gray one. 
Yeah. And then hit through. Oh, yeah. oh, you need to command. Oh, I thought those were supposed to jump straight after you with this thing. Oh, because okay. uh, it has to, they both have to be highlighted and then you can right click mm, okay. on one of the highlighted ones and then hit group. So you could essentially go through this whole list group the products in different categories because you think some should be related to each other. Um, and that's another way for you to uh, make your table even more summarized. Um, okay, so group is one thing. Um, you can always ungroup them as well by right clicking and then clicking ungroup. Right click on the, the group name. Okay, so everything should be ungrouped again. Okay, so uh, let's see. So you already know you can also move more than one category into a field. That makes things more advanced as well. Um, we went over how you can put the same field two times mm -hmm. and be read differently. And oh, another tip is um, if you wanted to format your entire column the same way, just right click on the column name and then uh, go to value field settings. And then here is where in the show values as, wait, let me see. Wait, not that one. Oh, number format, sorry. Number format. That's where you can oh, make sure. Dollars. Yeah, make it dollar. Or make sure that the whole, see right now it's accounting, you can make it currency, whatever. Um, and this make sure that the whole column stays in the same format. And what else? Oh, and another tip is for example, if you wanted to know where the calculation came from for fruits and vegetables, okay. and you want to check that the pivot table is doing it right, if you just double click on the cell, for some revenue, it will create a new sheet for you, and it will tell you exactly where all the calculations came from for fruits and vegetables. And you can do that for any of the summary cells. Yeah, so that's helpful. You don't even have to manually go through it all. It will do it in just like two clicks. Um, okay, and then another tip is it's nice if you um, turn off all these grid lines when you have a pivot table. So if you go to view and turn uncheck the box for grid lines, that might be a little easier on the eyes to read. When you uncheck grid lines. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, those are so Yeah, yeah, all these are gone. Okay. Yeah, it looks much cleaner. So especially for whenever I used to do the dashboard. All the grid lines are off because that would be super distracting. Okay, so then back to this. Um, what other tips do I have? Pivot table design options. Okay, so to play around more with the pivot table, if you go to, if you're clicked into the pivot table and you go to the design tab, okay. you can actually change the report layout. So it has compact more. It has outline form. Here it's not changing that much, actually. You can see it's changing the first columns. Oh, yeah, name. Because in, uh, when I worked it, they, they had uh, like a total um, to, um, just before each and every line. So when you make it a compact form, it just uh, mm. it kills all the total lines. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's one thing that you can play around with. And then. Yeah, just click around and see what options there are in the design tab. And then also another area you may want to play around with is in the in the analyze tab, the options, which we already explored a little bit um, with the show empty cells as. You can also show any error values, like in calculations, as a certain thing. Um, and you can ask it to stop auto-fitting your columns, or you know, there's a lot of options. But I generally like how everything is. Or you can sort A to Z. Um, yeah. 
Okay, and two options. Okay, so um, let's create a pivot chart from this pivot table. Okay, so if you click anywhere in the table, go to, sorry, insert pivot chart instead of recommend, instead of just like the typical charts. And let's just start by doing a bar chart and click OK. Well, that's one like the yeah. Yeah, you can select any. You can select fewer or more categories, or salespeople. Yeah, it'll always change based off of this table. So that's why dashboards are so nice using pivot tables and pivot charts is because uh, it automatically changes as the data changes. And another thing you can do is, remember how we added slicers to our table? In pivot tables, you also have a option to add a, a timeline. So, Okay, so if you go to, if you're in the table and you go to insert and you click timeline. It's only have order date. Yeah, it only has order date. But um, that's another way that you can click around the buttons and the things will change based off of the model. Or you can do years or quarters too if you do this drop down. Yeah, and that's like quarters is useful for business. Uh, and timeline, the timeline option is only available when you do a pivot table or pivot chart. Any regular table or regular chart doesn't have the timeline option. Mm -hmm. 